Uh, Admiral, thank you for being here and congratulations uh, on your many decades now of, of outstanding service. And on behalf of your fellow Missourians, uh, I just want to say uh, thank you for all that you've done for the country. And we're very proud of you in the state of Missouri. So thank you for your service. Let me uh, let me ask you a question uh, that I posed to Deputy Secretary of Defense Kathleen Hicks uh, in her testimony a couple of weeks ago. Uh, she testified that it is essential for the United States to maintain the ability uh, to defeat a Chinese fait accompli against Taiwan in order to strengthen deterrence against China. Do you agree with uh, Deputy Hicks on this point? Absolutely. And, and do you agree with the Deputy Hicks that a strategy of denial is essential for deterring Chinese aggression? Yes, and that's that's core to our approach in the 1251 report. Yes, it is. Let, let me just give you a second to, to explain to the committee why it's important, you think, to strengthen our forces west of the international date line in order to effectively achieve deterrence by denial. Yeah, uh, thanks, Senator. It's, uh, you know, our posture in the region uh, must be demonstrative of the capabilities that the United States could and would bring to bear in a crisis, its capacity, numbers, and the will of the United States to prevent the fait accompli um, highlighted. Um, we, we fulfill that not only through, and this goes back to a little bit to what Senator Duckworth had to say, not only through, you know, people focus so much on fires and platforms, but, but it's the whole of the apparatus that makes that sound, right? It's the logistics, it's the intelligence and warning, it's all that stuff that buys, buys you um, the time in order to present options um, to the national security apparatus here and the, and the nation should um, the day-to-day the -day competition turn to crisis. Importantly, what we're trying to do is every day that China gets out of bed and peels back the curtain and sees the United States and its allied and partner network out there in the Western Pacific assuring its own access, that it thinks, I don't want to mess with that capability, that capacity, and what I know to be the will, and closes the curtain and doesn't go to fight. You know, that's what we're trying to achieve. Yeah, let me just ask you about the window of conflict with regard to China. Some are saying that we don't really need to worry about potential conflict with China until 2035 or even later. You said last week China could achieve military overmatch in the region as soon as 2026. And then if it does, and this is, I'm quoting you now, it could likely choose to forcibly change the status quo in the region. Can you just elaborate on those comments? Yeah, the, we've, um, we have indication that the, the risks um, are actually uh, going up. Uh, I, I have to be a little delicate here, Senator, because uh, of the classified nature of uh, some of the material. Um, but I think demonstrably what you're seeing China do in the region, in Hong Kong, in the South China Sea, in the East China Sea, some of the malign military actions they've taken in and around Taiwan and elsewhere in the East China Sea and the South China Sea are indicative that um, China's pace is quickening. And we need to be postured to prevent that quickening from happening. You also said that if China does succeed in changing the status quo, that that change would likely be permanent. What, tell us what you meant by that. Well, they've made quite plain that they would wish to supplant US leadership around the globe. Um, I seeing a whole government effort uh, in trying to fulfill that ambition, and they're trying to do that by mid-century. Um, they are knocking down waypoints that they think stand in their way of achieving that. I would say the most recent um, waypoint that they've knocked down is uh, the establishment of the national security law or the revocation of the national security law in, uh, in um, Hong Kong and the obliteration of one country and uh, two systems there. Um, that fundamentally is, is you know, I think sending a chill across the region about what Chinese ambitions might be and who might, um, you know, fall ill of Chinese design. Back to you. Yeah, I've got just a few seconds here. Let me ask you to give you the opportunity actually to comment about the Guam defense system. You've spoken about the need for this on a number of occasions. Just, just give us a sense of what 
will happen to our ability to deter Chinese aggression if we don't strengthen Guam's air and missile defense systems. It's the key piece um, that we're missing that signals to the region that the U.S. is a reliable and committed security partner, um, that we are there to defend uh, not only U.S. territory but our interests abroad, and in combination with other capabilities, um, a more distributed posture, a higher level of lethality um, in our air and maritime and ground forces um, that might be um, rotating or present in the region, um, puts forward that total deterrent posture that helps the deter by denial objective, that they can't knock Guam out with an easy shot and keep us out of the fight to present that fait accompli that um, Dep Deputy Secretary Hicks talked about. Great. Thank you, Admiral. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.